Okay, good morning folks. Um, weather's not too clever today. Uh, it's raining so I decided to come down to the shed and maybe do a bit of um, a modification and a review to Mora 510. I know you can see that. Yeah, there we are. I think it's in focus. Mora 510. It's a 95mm blade which is just under for I think it's about three and a half, three and three quarter inches, two mil thick carbon steel blade. Feels lovely in the hand, and as the great Kohansky would say, it's a perfect size because the blade is into the palm and the handle is enough just for the hand. So it's a nice little knife, very cheap. I think I bought it for about eleven pounds, eleven fifty. That's $13, $14 or whatever to US, chap, uh, US folks. Like I said, carbon steel. My concern is at the moment is, I don't know if you can see that on shot, the back edge is rounded. So there's no 90 degree. It can't take a fire steel. So what I'm gonna do now is, I know it's only a cheap knife, but we'll give it a go. I'm gonna grind a 90 degree flat edge on the back of the spine uh, on my Sorby Pro Edge. This is a good bit of kit. I bought this primarily for sharpening um, all my wood turning tools and uh, my carving stuff and it's turned into and I bought other things and through uh, Hewn and Hone and Equestaman which I bought the table and things on it so I can, I've done a bit of knife making on it as well. But I'm going to use that now to put a 90 degree spine on. That's the first mod. First of all, I'm checking it. Is it in at yes it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use um, one of my flat block mounts. This is for just doing um, chopping chisels on the table that comes with the uh, Sorby Pro Edge. I just want it as it's got a nice flat back that I can. I'm going to tape the edge up so I don't cut my fingers off. So then I can offer it up and give myself a nice flat edge. Okay, don't forget. Safety glasses. I've also got a water bath there to cool it down because I don't want to lose any temper on it. Come in. So the rounding goes quite far down the blade so I'm putting a bit of a clip point on this now. Right, it's not super sharp. I'll probably take that down a bit more. I think you can see that now. You can see this at the back edge was like there, and then shiny front on the clip. It does feel more aggressive. I may have to take it a little bit more because I don't know if you can see this rounding on the back edge where it's polished. I have to take it below that to give myself a perfect 90. It's a hell of a lot better at the moment. Right, I'm hoping now this will pick it up better where you can see the light. It's this section I've done anyway. I haven't bothered with this because I'm going to be using this for a bit of carving as well. So. I just wanted the tip, so I just grabbed a fire steel out of my kit. That obviously that's the back edge that was rounded, so that does nothing. This is a bit I've just run over, two minute job. Granted, you know, you are all got a Robert Sorby Pro Edge, but you can do that with sandpaper on a flat board. 
I don't think I'll bother doing any finer grits. That was enough, so brilliant. That's the first mod. Right, for the next modification, sorry I'm sweating, it's quite warm in here today. For the next mod now, obviously, done the, the back edge for the fire steel. Next mod I want to do is, right, one of the failings of, um, I'm not saying Mora, but um, I'm not a tactical knife person. I'm not in the military or anything, so ideally if I put something down, let me just take the label off, I don't need that anymore. If I put the knife down when I'm in the woods, when I'm carving, I'm doing something, I'm going to lose that. So, Mora, if you're listening, if you could make the same knife in bright orange, or like you've done with um, the companion, with just the orange ends, just so the bright orange, and even something on the sheath, just to make it more visible, it'd be brilliant. But, what I'm going to do is, duct tape. Now, I'll pick this up in Aldi's for a couple of pounds or whatever it is. So, duct tape's always invaluable, but before I duct tape it all, the other mod I want to do to it is paracord. So, I want to give this quite a bit of, I mean, I could really easily go to town and turn this into a bit of a survival knife where you see people taping hooks, needles, everything to the sheath. I'm not going to bother because I'm never going to take it off and use it. I want this as an actual user. But duct tape is very useful. You get cuts, you want to repair something in the field. I normally wrap my uh, bottle or my torch and things in duct tape. Duct tape's always handy. So it's going to have a couple of wraps of duct tape, but also more than enough paracord put on that I got a bowl drill cord, shoelace repair, tie in stuff. I'll have repair stuff on the knife. That's about it. I'm not going to do any more mods. I'm not going to tape a lighter to it, fire steels, anything. I want this to stay nice and light. Sometimes I might want to, I might, might want to carry it as a neck carry with all that paraphernalia on it. It's just going to weigh it down. This is really light. I'm not sure about the weight of the total thing, but it weighs barely anything, and that's the thing. That's the reason I like it. So let's get on to it. Let's wrap it up. Okay. I've wrapped it with paracord. It doesn't have to be pretty. It hasn't added too much to the bulk and weight. I've kept it on the lower half, which is obviously narrower, because this is now going to have a couple of wraps of duct tape, and I'm also going to put some duct tape over the cord just to seal everything in, and then I've got the best of both worlds. There's no missing this duct tape, is there? Nice and bright. That is the whole point of making it more visible, at least when I put it down, or getting it out of a bag. Because most um, quick bag manufacturers haven't quite cottoned on to the fact that when you put something in a rucksack, it is hard to find then, because all rucksacks are dark on the inside. Why can't they just have a bright dinner? Need me to this. This is fiddly getting this on as tight as possible. Ain't gonna be pretty. Wrapped it up with some duct tape. Obviously, a good few wraps of high vis green, and then um, two arm spans. So it's probably about 11, 12 foot of paracord. Wrapped it on the bottom half, and then duct tape around that just so it doesn't go anywhere. Obviously, it gives me a lot more grip on the sheath now, so when I want to pull the knife out, it isn't slippery, especially with cold, wet hands. So, anyway, let's get on to testing the knife. Bear in mind, this is still the factory edge that goes on the knife. I more than likely will give it a proper sharpen and a strop in. But. <laughs> That's not bad. It's actually really comfortable to hold. I mean, some might say it's a bit narrow in the hand. If I was doing a lot of work with it, then well, I don't know, because if I'm aiming more, this more at a lightweight necker that I can comfortably make um, a pot hanger, 
do a bit of carving with. It's a really nice size. Right. I mean, so far, I've got a knot there, that's why I'm uh, skipping. Well, feathers lovely. I didn't think it was. I got. A, I just found my old companion. Look at the size difference. Of those two. I know I should zoom out, but this has got more depth on it. I don't think. I know it says on the spec on the when I googled it that was two. I don't think it's two. It's one point eight or something. This is two mil. And that's a stainless clip, uh, stainless companion. <coughs> I got more is lying everywhere. I got another one hanging up there. Anyway, so I think what I'll do is I need to give it a proper sharpen, and then a couple of feather sticks, light them up with a new ground grind on the back, and then the next thing then is I need to do a bit of carving. Shouldn't light it inside my shed with all the, the inflammable stuff I got, yeah, or flammable, I should say. Right, I'm just going to give it a tickle on the stones, or stone, I should say. I'm just going to take this bit of sort of polish glaze off the edge. Just to Give me a slight bird on the other side, flip it over, polish and stone, strop, job done. Okay, that's probably enough on the, what is it now, 800 I think it is. No, sorry, it's a 1,000. It's 1,000 on the course, 6,000 on the fine stone. This is the first water stone I bought many, many, many years ago. I've got a lot of stones, but I find just find this one convenient just to leave it in the water bath. That's all that's left of my Naguda stone. I have got another one on order off the bay. But, uh, this is just to give myself a slurry to Polish, yeah, I can't beat an old pair of pants to clean stuff. So for all you folks out there, when you throw your clothes in the bin, your socks and your pants, don't bother. Give them a wash, keep them as rags down the shed. Right, so, let's get this polished up and then get on the strop. Right, just for the first stage I'm using... Veritas, only compound, and a leather strop, just mounted in the vice, this isn't my uh, method of choice, I normally do it with a Stanley vice up in the house, but I'm in the shed now, so. Let's get strop in. I can't press too hard, obviously, because it's a flexible blade. And it's less than two mil thick, so I'm not going to go wild on it. This is just to a bit more of a polish and give it uh, remove any burr on the edge. Okay, so I'm on the white um, compound now, the polish on. And as you can see, not from the knife from the corner of my vice and it's not the first time the bug has bit me as well that's why I've had a black nail for the last three months working here and I caught it on the side and now it's taking a nice chunk out of the side of my thumb so maybe the next part of um, the process I may have to wait a day for this to close up because I'm carving so anyway you can see now there's a nice um, polished edge come in 
probably cut myself knowing me now, but <laughs> oh my god, right okay, that's a bit sharp. Didn't take me long at all. I hardly done any work on the stones and just a strop. It's taken it to the fig edge on it. So we can now show us sparks, shave, carve, whatever, and it's got a more visible versatile sheath. So far, really liking this knife. Not liking my vice at the moment because it bit me. But uh, I have toyed with drilling a lanyard hole in here. But I think because I want to use this for carving as well, that cord's going to start to get on my nerves. So I think I'll just leave it as is. Anyway, that's the first stage done. The knife. Trying to make myself a little later. So I have roughed out a blank. It's only a piece of sycamore, that's all I could get hold of. So I'm going to use this now, hopefully, get it all done.
don't know if we can see that. I'll keep going, but... It's a bit very green. But it'll be enough to stir my tea. Gotta take some of that thickness away from there. Take the edge off the bowl. Well, it's doing a passable job. I sort of a bit of um, clean sycamore. I might leave it a bit now because it needs to dry a bit. It's still a bit too, there's too much moisture in it. But so far, I'm impressed. Look at that on camera. An 11 pound knife, 11 pound 50. A decent edge in it. You saw the mods and stuff earlier in the video. Is it good enough for bushcraft? Yes, definitely. I think potentially there's something like this or the companion. How much you pick a companion for 14 pounds? Heavy duty for less than 20. Fantastic value for money. And if you if you're Clued up on the sharpening so you can put a decent edge on it because, yeah, they're sharp out of the box, but they're not properly sharp. And then sharpen the back edge, you take a fire steel, a ferro rod, a couple of modifications. You can't fault it. There's nothing wrong with buying a real high quality custom made knife. I got loads, I've spent a lot of money on them, and it's fantastic using a really, really good quality knife. But if you're starting out, can't go wrong with that. Anyway, if you're watching Welsh Woods and Outdoors, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, there should be enough footage now to give you an explanation of this knife. Um, if you've liked it, give me a thumbs up. Uh, don't, click down below, um, get subscribed in, click on the bell so you get notifications if I make any new content. And uh, there'll be more coming in the future. So, come back soon. I'm gonna dry this out, we're gonna make a, go make a cup of tea.